Good morning, Red Devils. I'm Sophia. And I'm Mika. And this is your Red, Red Devils, Devils Review. Review. Good morning, Red Devils. My name is David Zhang, your ASV president. Please stand and join me for the pledge. Place your right hand over your heart. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may now be seated. Tomorrow during third period, there will be a safety drill. Thank you. The AVID program is inviting juniors and seniors to sign up for a university admission presentation. It will be held during third period, and if you're interested, please sign up with Mr. Mrs. Arroyo, and you can find her in the counseling office. Thank you. Come and join our community for a special movie event at National City Public Library. They will be showing the ride, and there will be a special guest. Thank you. Ready? There will be soccer chats on November 5th and the 7th through the 10th from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. So make sure to show up and try out. During lunch, there will be army critters. So make sure to show up and show your support. If you are interested in participating in our school science fair, please come by room 214 on Wednesday, October 26th during lunch to get more information. Thank you. Hey, Sue, hi. It's Miss Elam in room 304. I'm here to let you know we are restarting the Immigration Club this year, the Red Devil Dreamers. So if you want to stop by, our first meeting will be next Wednesday, October 26th at lunch. Email me for a pass or stop by room 304 and I'll give you a pass so that you can get upstairs. And we'll be talking about all kinds of things this year. Anybody who's interested in immigration issues, feel free to join us. We'll be talking about any changes that come out with DACA as the courts are continuing to make rulings on that. We'll be talking about college applications, financial aid options for those who are undocumented, for those who are from mixed status families. We'll be continuing to work with students without limits. Our immigration attorney, Amy Scully, will be here to help us with DREAM Act applications, and she can meet with you on Zoom to do work on the application as well. We'll also be talking about any other issues that come up and just having a chance to have some support and time together with other people who are in your situation. You don't have to be undocumented or from a mixed status family to join us. You can join us and support your friends and people within our city who are also in that situation and learn more about how we can help. So feel free to let me know if you're interested. Stop by room 304 or send me an email. I will put the information on a Google Doc and you can scan that from the QR code. Thanks. Have a great day, Red Devils. Everyone standing here represents the eligible voters in the United States. That's people who are 18 years old and who are citizens of the United States. Half the class is holding a number one or a number two. If you're holding a number two, please sit down. Everyone who sat represents all the young people in the United States who never registered to vote. They will not be able to vote this November 8th. Half the class is now holding a number one or a two. If you're holding a number two, please sit down. Everyone who sat this time represents all the young people who are registered to vote, but chose not to vote. The people who are left standing are the ones who registered to vote and showed up to vote. This exercise represents voting in a presidential election year, in a year when only congressional representatives, state and local candidates are running. A midterm year, the number of people still standing would be even fewer. Hello, I'm Perez Hilton. Did you know that more people in the United States check their Facebook and watch the Super Bowl? then exercise their right to vote. We've got some serious issues to deal with. So how come so many of us don't even bother to vote? Is it because we don't care? Or maybe it's because we don't know our history. So let's go back, way back. Our country's first election came after fighting for our independence, a fight that cost many lives, but it was worth it because instead of being ruled by a king, we were finally able to make our own laws. Hello, everyone. My name is Mr. Dumas. I teach AP U.S. History and Ethnic Studies here at Bonita Vista. And today I'm going to be talking to you about the N-word because we have 
a huge problem on this campus with the N-word. Uh, I'm also the advisor for the Black Student Union. And every year, we have a meeting with the Black Student Union where I have students in my classroom, black students, telling me how hurt they are, how much pain they experience when they hear the N-word just being used so freely around campus, um, particularly by non-black people. And so I think that there's a lot of things that you just don't understand about the N-word that I'm gonna try to set straight for you. Now I know you're using it because you wanna be cool and you think it makes you sound cool. Um, and you think, oh, well, I say it with an A, not an ER, so I'm saying it in the cool way. But there's really no difference between those two words. It's the same word. Uh, and really, the history of that word is such that when this society was being built, this extremely racialized society that we live in, right? And that's what we live in. That's what we recognize about each other. We categorize each other by race, even though scientifically, biologically, race doesn't exist. We live in a society in which race does exist and has meaning. And so when they're creating this racialized society, right, they did so because they were enslaving people from Africa and their descendants. And so that institution of slavery and all that's included in that, which you're familiar with, the whippings and rapes and the selling of children from their mother's arms, that brutal crime against humanity stretched for hundreds of years, right? And so in order to make themselves feel justified in doing that to an entire group of people, they had to dehumanize them. And so they created a word to help them do that, right? That N word. And so it didn't matter who they were speaking to or about, right? It's gender neutral. It, for men and women, for old people and young people, if you were African or African descended, then you were an N-word. And that's what they said over and over and over and over again to strip the people that they were talking about of their humanity. So no longer were they brothers, mothers, teachers, farmers. They were just N-words. N-word, 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 over and over until they began to internalize that over a course of centuries, a internalized uh, self-hatred and oppression grew inside of a lot uh, of, of many African and African descended people, so much so, of course, that they start using that word against each other, calling each other the N-word. And, and they began calling their children the N-word. Now, part of that is uh, a manifestation of that internal hatred. But another part of that is to protect the child. Hi, I'm Mary. And I'm Jade. And we're from the Mock Child Club. Right now, we're doing a case about robbery. And it's every Tuesday in Mr. S. Brown's room from 345 to 5. And next week, there'll be a video coming out with more information. So stay tuned for that. And make sure to catch us at Mock Child. That's all we have for you today, Red Devils. I've been Sophia. And I've been Mika. And this has been your, your Red, Red Devils, Devils Review. Review. Make it a great day. Or not. The choice is always yours. yours. Wait, no, we're so <laughs>